Today I am joined by the stars, the hell, the goddamn villains of Girl Lost. Killer a, villains of Girl Lost, a Hollywood story. What's going on, everybody? Hi, hi. Welcome to Villain Land. Right. We have Serena and Cody, the absolute villains of this. Very like. It was a dark look, an absolute dark look of like the sex industry in Hollywood. But yet realistic also. Yeah. Well, and I didn't think, at least on my end, that like trafficking in like adult films was happening like that in Hollywood. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> All the time. Oof. Because, like, you know, I, I have my connections to, you know, the mainstream industry on that. But we're like, you know, there's 2257 paperwork happening and legitimate production and no one's there ostensibly against their will to see stuff where it's like, Oh, these poor women are being drugged and forced into scenes that they don't even know are going to happen was just like, Woof. I was completely unaware that like shit like that was actually happening around Hollywood. I think a lot of people, especially if you don't live anywhere near Southern California, they live in like the Midwest or East Coast. They have zero clue how bad it is out here. You know, they don't even know about all the crazy homeless encampments that we con constantly drive by every day. All they see is the palm trees and Hollywood sign and the glitz and glamour and red carpets. And oh, yeah. It's not all. Hollywood's kind of slummy. It's like, you know, we're all roughly in the same part of Hollywood. And like, I keep <clears> making <throat> jokes about this, Cody, about the homeless encampment near us that. They have a sign that like have a no trespassing sign. Like we have homeless gated <laughs> communities around us. <laughs> yes, it's uh, literally right. I live right off the 101, and that whole section is all that. And they have all these signs up, and um, this guy made like his own little makeshift gate. It's it's crazy. It's no really trespassing. Crazy. Oh yeah, like the homeless are discriminating against other homeless. <laughs> like we don't want your lower tier homeless in our community. Wow, that's what yeah. it's come down to. And they, there's just different rules for different people too, right? Like if I leave my car on the street during street cleaning, I get a, a parking ticket, but like- They can park their be... tent anywhere. Yeah. Well, <laughs> even the RVs or if your vehicle like doesn't run, there's like different rules for you. So we had a van, like a creepy ass van outside for months. And then because that was okay, other people started to bring their vans in and our whole street just filled up and like, you don't even feel safe walking your dogs, you know, like it's just- yeah, Maybe. and parking around our neighborhood sucked before that. Yeah, yeah now exactly. it's ten times worse. Yeah. yeah. Like, I'm at least a large dude, so I'm not too worried about, like, being accosted. But, like, being someone Cody's size, I'm like, mm, that. Yeah. But the, the sex trafficking, I mean, back to that, it's, there's definitely, right, there's so many different kinds of stories. There's, like, really, like, normal or average girl walking down the street gets pulled into a van, that kind of sex trafficking. There's, I think what most of us are maybe more familiar with and feel like happens more often is um, the manipulation that comes with it. Like maybe you have a bad home life and you're trying to escape and some sort of guy or girl offers you these opportunities. And, um, you know, then next one thing leads to another. Um, I think for me, I used to work in Koreatown doing karaoke hostessing. <laughs> and, you know, you see those ads up on Craigslist, right? They're like, come be a karaoke hostess. I'm like, sweet. To me, that means like taking people's names down for songs. And, you know, that's about it. And then you get there and you realize that like you're being driven around in a van with other girls and they're walking you into rooms for guys to choose you to sit down and hang out with them and then drink with them and then and then whatever could. Yeah, exactly. There's all these and thens, and you're like, wait, I thought I was just going to sing some songs. Um, <laughs> and to, I mean, I don't feel like I was trafficked at all or, or anything. Like, I made you a would, lot of money. You would traffic yourself in no problem. I <laughs> exactly. traffic myself on the daily. <laughs> exactly. Um, I was very happy to be there and make money because it, it could be fun and lighthearted, and like you did make friends, and it was like you were there hanging out with guys that became your friends that were paying you to hang out. But also then you saw girls like giving hand jobs with trash bags, like with a, like a Ralph's bag under the table. Like oh. there was just, 
That, wow. It was just, yeah. <laughs> Does it bring that, your that, own rubs like, back? Like, like, that, that doesn't sound fun for anyone involved. <laughs> I guess when you're so numb from so many drugs, your dick just like doesn't feel how rough the bag is. I, I, that, I mean, like, I've, I've been drunk in my life. I have been fucked up. I have never been so fucked up where like, you know what? You're gorgeous. A Ralph's handy sounds like a great idea right now. Like <laughs> that costs extra. <laughs> like I, I would rather just go home and take care of myself than get a Ralph's handy. Yeah. Like and the thing about it is like there's plenty of consensual sex work that's going around LA. Like, you know, I think everyone's aware of that. Your guys' movie really put a light on like the non consensual sex work, which is definitely a problem. You know, sex work is a career, like, if you're choosing to be there, it's fine. It's good. Like, as long as you know what you're getting yourself into. Like the, That's sex worker versus sex traffic. Right. Exactly. Yeah. But I, I, just for anyone who's listening in the Midwest or some shit, I really wanted to make sure, like, <laughs> that difference is illustrated. Clear. Yeah. Like, but it was really crazy to see, too, the girls that that come in and then I, I did that job on and off for years and I would see like new girls, like new from the Midwest come in or, you know, the younger girls and then start to like kind of deteriorate like their mental health or, you know, cause you're up all night sleeping all day. And then like the plastic surgery, there's like all, you know, cause you have self-esteem issues and then guys are paying for your plastic surgery and just watching this arc of, you know, sometimes a happy go lucky girl who's just like needs a little bit of extra cash all of a sudden is now, well, either, you know, on a private jet taking trips to fucking Hawaii or like, you know, having to go see a therapist and like feels like her whole life has ended, you know, like it's just Can crazy. we get back to the guys that want to pay for a plastic surgery? Because where do I sign up for that? Matt, are you in? Oh, you think I got, look at my gut. Like, you think I got plastic surgery money for other people? Like, I'd be skinny if I had plastic surgery money. Come on. Like. I live in Hollywood too. Like I, I, I like on myself before I, I'm paying for some girl I just met at a karaoke bar. Like once again, the background's fake. The background is fake. I, but and I had an ex girlfriend who moved here from Chicago who almost ended up doing the hostess gig, and mm-hmm. I was dating a Korean girl at the time who was like, "No, no, no, you can't let her do that shit." Like. It's bad news. And that's before I had other friends that were doing it, that were doing it just like for funsies and weren't getting, you know, actually trafficked. Right. So like when I heard about that in the first place, just the situation of it's like, oh, this guy interviewed me at a Denny's on Vermont and then wants (laughs) me to park my car there and is going to drive me around. I'm like, that is so sketchy. <laughs> no. At least you didn't say the Denny's on Gower and Sunset or whatever, because that one's right? more ghetto. <laughs> but still, the idea of like, oh hey, you're gonna do this nightlife job, and we're interviewing you at the Denny's, and then like when you go do the gig, you park your car at the Denny's, and then you pile into a van. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's literally it. Cody's. <laughs> that's literally it. Yeah, in 2015, 2016. 20, no, it's like 2015, 2016. When that was going down, and like I was unaware of like that part of LA's sex work industry, I'm just like, girl, I I care about you. Like, yeah, you know, we're not together anymore, but I really don't want to see you end up like disappearing from the grid because I'm your only contact here in LA. Thankfully, yeah. that shit and doesn't seem to happen, but it can. There's yeah, there's karaoke hosting, there's poker games. I mean, there's just endless things out here that could really. Even I went and interviewed to um, I went to bartend at a. Uh, a strip club and thank God the outfits were hideous. So like I didn't end up doing it, but I mean all those jobs that seem like innocent enough, right. Hostessing or, you know, dealing cards, all they can be gateways into this crazy industry that you see. And I don't know the um, girl lost a Hollywood story kind of like highlights a little bit of that, you know, so a couple individual stories of like what's happening. I know it's not, truly established but i'm assuming the other main character was technically 18 though there was the one scene where she was giving her first massage where she's like yeah i'm 18 it was it was it was real dark i mean it was real dark yeah i think in the original script it's um she's 14 right the actress is 18 obviously but the character is 14 um so well and that's never explicitly said so it was just like more assumed. Or, yeah, it was. Just, yeah, it's, it's very implied. She looks very young. Oh yeah, no, no, she looked yeah. super young, and it was still like 
the idea of like a producer, like someone who's actually producing content that was like, oh yeah, we're going to turn you out. And like, it was, it was mind blowing to me to like, for someone who ends up on adult sets where it's like, oh no, I've been a PA where it's like, no, no, everyone's getting their IDs and paperwork checked to like see someone who's just like, oh no, no, we're doing something that's just illegal here. It was just like, oh, that shit happens. Fuck. Yeah. And those poor, poor girls, like I said, they see everything you see on TV and all the little reality shows and everything's so great out here and they could come out here and, you know, they're going to only fall into the best of hands and they run away from home and that's where they end up in the wrong hands real fast. Oh, yeah. On I a mean, trip to Hollywood Boulevard. I mean, hell, in the best of situations, people can end up in the wrong hands. Hell, someone can have a completely, you know, non-sex work, non-sex trafficking mainstream career and end up in real shit hands out here. Yeah. yeah. The cool thing about the movie, though, is it's written, directed, and produced by Robin Bain, who is also a female. And um, just her and Serena and I all have, like, a lot in common. Like, we all come from, like, the Playboy world, and we've all, you know, we've been in Hollywood, and we've witnessed these things. And um, I've done a bunch of interviews with Robin, and one of the things that she'll say is, you know, people ask, like, is this based on your life or stories you've heard? And she's like, yeah, this is based on, like, my experience with, with people and what I've seen. Um, so, I mean, that just adds like a layer of darkness to it, but, um, but what's really cool to be on set with all these ladies is because we were a support system for each other and we got to like share our stories and, um, you know, we got really got to put things that had happened to us into our characters and kind of like express that, which was so cool. Like a lot of the stuff I do is comedy or, you know, I, I play like strippers that don't have, um, like any sort of arc. And so in this story, you got to see these girls like fight for themselves and, you know, whether they win or lose, like they're all fighting for something. And that was really cool. Well, and your character, especially like, is very illustrated that you came from a broken home too. And you were a hurt person hurting other people. Yeah. You see that for both of our characters. Yeah. You see her mom and, oh my gosh, I could think of, yeah, I mean, you know, people like that and the people with kids and you're just like, I've seen this story before. Honestly, I wanted to know, more about um, Serena's character. I want to know more about my character. I want to know more about her mom. Like, I, they're, Robin has talked about making a whole TV show about all the different characters. And I'm like, yes, you have to do it because I want to know. I want to see more. And, you know, being a serious regular wouldn't hurt either. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> and Robin is just fantastic. It's kind of cute. I was watching you talk about her, Cody, and your face lit up. It was so cute, like a kid in a candy store, which just shows how much we really do love Robin. Like, she was honestly one of the best directors, producers to work for I've ever had in my career. She just yeah, made it I really, Yeah, I really admire her and look up to her. And, and her story, too, is so cool, you know, starting from modeling and then now to being a badass producer. Like, that's living. She's literally living the dream and changing people's lives in the process. Um, that's cool. So how did you two get attached to the project? Well, what we didn't know is we'd end up being attached to each other. <laughs> which we did <laughs> it was like we're like oh did we just become best friends you live a half block from me me too you flew on the same private jet i did me too different week wow wait <laughs> you stopped that oh wait you at the same time different times we just had all this in common <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think we when we <laughs> added each other on facebook we had like 180 friends in common and we're like how have we never met this is insane yeah um but it was so cool. We play best friends. And then as soon as we met, uh, you know, the like crew would be like, oh, so how long have you and Serena been best friends for? And we're like, we just met. Um, but by, I think day, <laughs> today, but by day three, um, you know, sh she has this like awesome car. So she would pick me up and we'd ride the set together. And, <laughs> and then you, know, you got get... your awesome car. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I actually, I auditioned for Robin. I didn't know anybody attached to the project beforehand. Although, Later found out that I think Robin had seen me around or knew me through my manager or something. But um, I auditioned for her and, yeah, then did a callback and then did a chemistry read with um, the girl that plays Hope. Uh, and it was between me and another girl. And uh, Robin just said that the chemistry with me and Hope was just so good. And it, it's so funny because, um, you know, as actors, we, like, really get in our heads. And I had my like long blonde extensions and Hope also has um, long blonde hair. 
And so I was like, oh, we look too similar. They're probably going to go with a brunette. The other girl's brunette. And I was like, I'm just going to, you know, just leave this up to the universe. And then it turns out, I think they kind of liked the vibe that we look like we could be sisters, you know, because she really looks up to me and admires me. And she, in the story, she ends up getting her nose pierced because I have my nose pierced or whatever. So it kind of made sense that we would have the same hair. And I don't know, maybe I like read too much into that, but I just like analyze everything. But, um, but yeah, I mean, just also auditioning for a female director it's just it's so different like the energy is so different so um but yeah I auditioned for it but also, I think Serena and- oh go ahead. oh <laughs> we're so cute this is us in real life too we're like no you go you go <laughs> also though um Cody it's you guys knew each other in the script like you guys were what neighbors or there was some mm-hmm. babysitting or something that went on so the fact you guys did look similar definitely went along with that setup that was yeah. Good. <clears throat> yeah for, um, sure. for me, it was really cool because I had come across the first Girl Lost movie on Amazon and I just watched it randomly one night and just fell in love with it. And I had seen Robin in the movie, but I didn't realize offhand that it was her film or she, I just thought she was acting in it. And then lo and behold, I get a call to go audition for the next one. And I was could not have been more on cloud nine to even be considered to be a part of a movie that I already fell in love with to be in, in the next film. Hell yeah. But that- and I think both of our parts too, because originally there was like a whole nother character and kind of storyline it was that was going on that got cut. But, um, you know, when Robin saw the chemistry between the three of us, you know, Hope being the other one, um, I think she wrote all of our parts larger and just like gave us a lot of room to like play and improvise and, um, it was just like, it was just a really cool environment to be a part of. Hell yeah. And it's also just kind of, a, even in like fictional sex trafficking, it's kind of a unique story because normally in those, you know, those fictionalized stories, it's some dude turning people out. It's not other women taking advantage of women, which I thought was a really interesting take on it. And I'm sure that happens in real life. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would say my knowledge in real life too is the majority of them, but yeah, there definitely are some women. Uh, actually I think of, um, uh, Jeffrey Epstein, right. Where it's like, he's obviously the bad guy, but he's got the, the chick sidekick who's making the women feel comfortable and drawing them in and then dumping them, you know? So I think that's, um, a story that we haven't really heard in the media, you know, is demonizing the females that are also a part of it. The, the girls tend to like get off easy or, or we just don't talk about them, you know? Yeah, and unfortunately, they don't always see justice because, like, the media often views them as a victim as well. And in some cases, yeah. I'm sure they are. But in some cases, I'm sure they're in this fully willing and able and like, oh, no, no, I see dollar signs. But it was yeah. it was just really interesting to see that in a depiction in a film where, like, you two are the villains. Like, you are 100% the villains of the film. And it just dark. Like, the idea of spoilers for anyone who hasn't seen the film it's available on amazon prime go watch it like there's you have amazon prime people i know you do go watch it <laughs> we know you've been shopping on amazon a yeah. lot during this pandemic so definitely have amazon prime <laughs> exactly exactly but the the fact that like cody especially your character having this history with hope's character and then just being allowing these horrible things to happen to her enabling these horrible things to happen to her is just so dark. It's like, it's one thing to, you know, having no imper- interpersonal relationship between the characters and the, versus like, oh, I've known you since you were nine and I abused you at a young age and now I'm continuing to abuse you. And let others abuse you. Yeah. Yeah. But I think, you know, it comes from, you know, her character, Paige's character was also abused. And so, you know, you have this, it's either like be the prey or become, or be the hunter, you know, and the only people in your realm are people like weaker, younger than you. And so like, that's kind of what you have to do survive, right? That's when they get the idea. They're like, we're the club now. Like the strip club was taking advantage of us and taking our money. Well, like, fuck, there are people below us. We could do it too. And that's going to be our way out of this. Um, And there was some more remorseful scenes that got cut from the movie, um, there was like a longer scene in the bathroom where you can see that like Paige is like, has a lot of inner, tor- or inner turmoil about what she's doing. 
Um, so, I mean, you definitely, I, I've heard some people say that they feel sorry for Paige's character and other people just be like, I fucking hate her. Um, I, I think there's definitely lots of layers, you know? Yeah. Well, I think it's both. I mean, cause on one hand you're like, it's not like Paige came out of the womb this way. Obviously life experiences, other traumas and abuse turned her this way. It wasn't like day one, she came out of the womb, like I'm going to use and abuse people. She obviously had her own rough history that brought her to this point. And same with destiny. It was like, you know, you had a alcoholic mother and probably the character had to survive on her own at points on the streets, you know, just a neglectful mother. And that's how she got by. Like those are both really dark backgrounds. Right. Yeah. And a lot of people that have seen the movie that know me because I'm actually very, very sweet. I was just going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> like all my friends from high school and wherever that have seen it or that know me the best are like, I just can't believe the character you played. Like it was actually so believable. And one of them said, I was watching it with some girlfriends of mine and they said, wow, that girl's a bitch. And he had to really convince them that I'm not like that in real life. <laughs> Oh my God, it was acting? Oh my now, God. Who knew? Who knew? <laughs> Actresses who act. Knew? <laughs> Sometimes we do. <laughs> but yeah, we would be like, if you know Serena and I, we're two of like the nicest people. And on the way Goofy. to that, we'd be, yeah, we'd be talking about like our self help books and how we're trying to like manifest good in the world. And then we'd be like <laughs> giggling on set and then we'd be like, okay, bitch face. You know? Like, <laughs> oh, okay. Wait, wait. Cody does this face. Do you think you'll be able to do it, Cody? The, the one? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> she does this face, and me and Robin made her do it a hundred times on set because it was so good. Uh, probably can't do it on cue very well, but you'll have to you know, get in the movie. You'll have to go back to that part. Exactly. Just hit me up. I'll let you know what part it is. <laughs> we'll give you timestamps. Like, right there. That's the Cody face. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> evil Cody, just evil Cody. Exactly, oh, judgmental yeah. bitch. <laughs> He's like. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's next for you guys? Like, what what upcoming projects do you guys got going on? Well, Robin is actually uh, she's been writing, and she was just talking to Serena how uh, she wants to have a meeting with us and discuss like future potential possibility things together, which is super fucking exciting. It's an um, honor to work for her and work alongside you, Miss Cody. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, I constantly have things in the woodwork. Um, I'll be in Portland next week filming a horror movie. Um, I'm actually assistant directing that. And then I'm helping with stunts. I play like a zombie creature thing. Um, so that's something I have coming up. But uh, I think right. <laughs> I think right now on Netflix, you can watch me in the Breaking Bad movie. It's called El Camino, a Breaking Bad story. And there's The Clapper with Ed Helms. And uh, I think on Amazon Prime is Girls, Guns, and Blood. And I have a weird accent in that one. And I get to do some flips and fight some dudes. So that one's pretty fun to watch. It's a little uh, grungy uh, grindhouse. Grungy grindhouse. That's, a grindhouse. A, that's the one you worked with my friend uh, Cleo Valentine on, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Hell yeah. Yep. Good times. I was in Texas and I hit her up. I was like, girl, let's go shoot guns together. But she was busy. Uh, I mean, yeah, she's oh. always so swamped. Um, Let's see. I'm taking care of my mom who has moved in with me because she's elderly and her health is bad. And I work in domestic violence and sex trafficking full time. So that's keeping me busy. And as far as the acting, I need to pick it back up. But first of all, I need to move into a much bigger apartment because <laughs> I have no space to do anything in here between my bed and the casket and mom's room and all the pets. So, But once I get a bigger place, I'll be able to do more of the video auditions and get back, back on the saddle again. And when I lose a little bit of that pandemic fluff. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime you want to go work out with me, I'm down. Okay, and if you want to go hike with me, I think we've yes. always talked about hiking and still have not yet. <laughs> <laughs> or, or we could just go drinking too. Yeah, that's, that's true. probably what that's what ends up happening. I feel like <laughs> Matt wants to hike. Matt, you want to hike and get bikini ready, right? Uh, <laughs> no, hard pass. I mean, with you two, sure. <laughs> By myself, I'm not hiking. But if you two ladies are like Matt, come hike with us, I'm, 
Well, how can I say no? Right. I mean, it's a hell of a plan. But, like, Wait, I have a, I have a question, Serena, because you didn't work in sex trafficking before the movie. So, do you right. feel like that? Do you think some like the universe kind of manifested, or you manifested, or do, was this like a pat? I don't know. Can you just talk? It's about a that very more? good, good question. I'm glad you brought that up since I reluctantly just forgot to even mention that part. But <laughs> yeah, it's weird because the universe just put it at my feet. I was actually bartending at Shameless Plug. Tortuga Brewing Company, <laughs> great little brewery in Inglewood that I was bartending at. Um, and then the pandemic hit and I only got to be on my unemployment for about two months while all my other friends were living their greatest lives on their unemployment, taking vacations and getting all this extra money, saving all this extra money. And somehow I fell into this job of working sex trafficking and domestic violence prevention emergency center. So it literally fell right into my lap. Somebody said that there was an opening. I applied, didn't think I was going to get it because you needed a two-year degree. But once I spoke to the director and she got through all my life experiences, she hired me anyways. So it's been a year, April. So I've been there a year. Wow. Wow. So what all do you do there? Like, can you tell the audience like more yeah. detail about it? So I work the hotlines certain days, but I also do case management where I have clients under me and I just help advocate for them, help get them into permanent housing, help get them the therapy they need, the legal services they need, anything they need. If they want to go back to school, I advocate for them and help them get that going. If they need to get some of their benefits from the state, I help advocate for them for that. So it's really good. It's been a really big learning experience for me. Hell yeah. Um, How do you feel Foster Cessna has affected like actual sex trafficking? I know it's definitely hurt like consensual sex work but like how do you feel it's affected actual sex trafficking um i i hate to say this but i think that it's more prominent now than ever the sex trafficking and i think it's just getting worse and worse i don't know how or when it's gonna stop but i think it's important that we do get the word out by this movie and help people become aware that they weren't before uh, i know with a lot of <clears throat> consensual sex workers like the back page has been shut down, forced a lot of women to go back to pimps or, you know, had to backside where they could be consensual, independent sex workers. Right. And then ended up in abusive situations because they need protection. They weren't able to vet clients. And it's also, we get a lot of victims where, you know, domestic violence is not always sex trafficking or domestic between like romantic partners. It could also be domestic, meaning family members abusing each other. And they also, we get a lot of that as well. Oof. Yeah, that, that's. And we're at capacity. We've been at capacity in my shelter for the past four months. We have oh no beds available. Does that None. mean you have to turn, you have to turn people away? Ugh. Mm -hmm. Ugh. And that's terrible. We do luckily have a database that we can look on and see if other domestic violence shelters have current bed space. Sometimes they do, but most of the time lately they don't. It's just the numbers are so high right now. Do you think people being potentially locked in with their abusers during the pandemic has made things worse? Ten times worse. Ten times yeah. worse. I mean, look how it is when you live with anybody. I mean, I don't want roommates. It's different to have my mom here because we have so much time apart and she's my mom. But I don't do the roommate thing because I like my space. And even... If and when I get into another relationship, my number one rule is going to be, I'm keeping my apartment. We can stay at your place or you can stay at mine here and there. We can spend the night together lots, but I'm not doing that give up my place and the whole thing because it is so hard to, you know, get along when you are in each other's face all the time. I don't know how you and Jigger do it. You guys are a different <laughs> kind of animal. You guys are adorable, but most people cannot do it. They just can't. Yeah. I mean, there's a reason that like, what, we're all pre-pandemic over like 50% divorce rate in America. You know, people yeah. just see the idealized Hollywood romantic story of like, oh, we've been dating for six months. We got to move in together. <laughs> right. Like, holy shit. I had no idea this motherfucker doesn't pick up after himself or never puts the toilet seat down or, you know, little things eventually add up. Like, oh, that's or no he big... decided to not work ever again. I'm going to go to work every day. <laughs> well, and Unfortunately, you know, we've all seen that in the adult entertainment business of like, oh, hey, 
you make so much goddamn money. I'm just going to play Xbox. Babe, can I get a new <laughs> <Yeah>. Xbox? <laughs> it's funny because it's true. <laughs> yep. The term suitcase pimp exists for a reason. Oh, yeah. my God. And casting I would, I would also be interested to see, like, piggybacking off the comment about the pandemic and sex workers, like, obviously, we all know that OnlyFans has, like, exploded during the shutdown of everything, right? So, um, it makes sense that a lot of girls that uh, were already in, right, strippers going on OnlyFans, that makes total sense, right? Like, that seems like a pretty seamless um, change. But I would be interested in, like, what's going on with a lot of, like, more, I use the word normal, but, like, I don't know, average girls, like, trying to get into this. Yep. What? Civilians. Yeah, yeah. Civilians. <laughs> one, one watching, they're like, oh my God, these girls are earning so much money. I could do it too. But they having these unrealistic, unrealistic expectations because they have no experience, they have no fan base, whatever. Um, but also just, you know, figure girls figuring out their comfort zones. I think a lot of girls doing it because they feel like they have no other option, right? Like for me, I love OnlyFans. I think it's super empowering. I come from the Playboy world. This makes sense that now, now Playboy doesn't get my money. Playboy's not my fucking pimp. I get my money, you know, like I'm my own boss. So that's really cool. Um, Where are the clubs now? <laughs> Where are the clubs now? The, I'm in so many like Telegram and Facebook chat groups, or whatever. And I just see these girls like being depressed or being angry or blaming, blaming the men, blaming the other women. Like there's just so much toxicity um, I mean, there's also a lot of empowerment, right? But it's just like more fun to talk about the bad, I guess. So there's just all this toxicity in it. And I don't know, I would just be the, the, the industry has exploded exponentially. I mean, girls are more and more girls are joining every day. So I'd just be guys are know. joining. Oh, yeah. Matt, and did guys. you make an OnlyFans yet? I have not. I've actually, <laughs> <laughs> I have, Dead Series have kicked it around, but like it, I'm not really about like having my dick on film. Like, even with all my time in adult, like, I've never wanted to be talent, but. There's still, it, because it's not just a sexy time platform, you can do other exclusive content on there. And I You can do topless girls doing shots or something, body shots yeah. could be your thing. I mean, there's, there's a, it's a brilliant platform on some levels because it's like, you can do pretty much whatever you want on there. And if you have an audience, you can make some money. At it. I have a comedian friend of mine, a male comedian friend of mine who's made 10 grand already on OnlyFans, which I know for a top tier OnlyFans earner isn't a ton of money, but for, but for a comedian, it sure is. That's probably more he, yeah. than he was making on a road tour. <laughs> right. Like as a ma especially as a male comedian, like, you know, there are definitely some hot female comedians who has some of them have started OnlyFans and they're making pretty good money at it. It's equal opportunity. The problem with it is it doesn't have discoverability. Like you have to have a built-in fan base or just be a hustler. Cody. To I mean, she has a fan base, but she is the hustler of all hustlers of all hustlers. If I had half the talent and energy levels that Cody has, oh, and yeah. free time, <laughs> then I'd be making a million like her. Well, I mean, <laughs> and a lot of what I feel would be more beneficial for OnlyFans is people who sign up for it having realistic expectations. Like, you're not going to be Angela White. You're not going to be someone who had a huge adult entertainment career and parlayed that into just a <clears throat> ginormous OnlyFans career. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, especially like if you weren't in entertainment beforehand, <clears throat> are should be satisfied and happy initially with like, if you have 20 subscribers. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a lot of mainstream. Well, I don't even know if a lot is the word, but what was the girl's name that almost fucked up the OnlyFans? Bella Thorne. Bella Thorne. Bella Thorne. Through that mm. girl. But also, there was this really good-looking guy I'd never heard of that's a mainstream actor that I saw on KTLA doing an interview. And he was like, yeah, I have an OnlyFans account. <laughs> and I was just oh, like, what? Name? Right? I'm going to have to look back in my phone. I definitely have a screenshot of it. <laughs> but I was like, huh, funny that they're mentioning OnlyFans on KTLA, for one. And for two, this guy's a good-looking mainstream guy. I'd go to his OnlyFans page. Well, I, I might have I might have already. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay to admit if you have. It's okay. But the gateway. The thing about it is, like, also, not all, all OnlyFans are created equal. Like, you know, you may just be doing bikini pics. You may just be hanging out on a hot tub on OnlyFans. 
or in maybe hard, hardcore pornography. And that's an interesting part about the platform too. Cause like if someone's going to you know, a tube site, they're there for hardcore pornography. Most people aren't going to a tube site to see someone in their bikini. So like that was part of the problem with the Bella Thorne situation was people were going, expecting Bella to be doing at least nudes and she wasn't. Well, didn't she promise some nudes on there? Wasn't that kind of the thing? From she what I understand, it was implied the person who was actually saying that there was going to be nudes was a catfish account. Okay, gotcha. Ooh. Which I know, Cody, you've had to deal with it. And sorry, I'm assuming you have too. Is people catfishing and like being scammers on Instagram and other social media accounts using their likeness? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's a big problem. And like, dudes are dumb, they're fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I have found from from people complaining, you're like, well, there's like a fake account. They're like, oh, well, this girl said, or you like, you said all these things, and then da, 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 and I'm like, wait, I promised this for this amount of money, and it was coming from this account that just got started. Like, you didn't think with no to, like, followers, right? Just, yeah, what, why, why would you not think to double check that, bro? Like, I don't know. Well, why would all of a sudden either one of you like DM some dude out of the blue and be like, yo? <laughs> I've been noticing you've been liking my photos on my other accounts. <laughs> this is for my special fans. Not my only fans, my <laughs> special fans. Please send me money. Like, I laugh my ass off about that shit because I get those scammers sliding into my DMs. And <laughs> nine times out of ten, the people they're impersonating, they're like, they give me that line of bullshit. And it's like, bro, if you had done 10 seconds of research, You'd see that I interviewed that person <laughs> and they have my phone number. <laughs> they wouldn't be asking me, so where are you from? I just oh. noticed you. I'm like, do really, you really think I'm going to fall for this? It's so bad. It's right up there with the Nigerian prince scam, man. Like, you open your eyes. Wait, well, you mean we're not going to run away with the Nigerian rich prince one day, Cody? Damn yeah. it. Okay, I Maybe. guess. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, in, in some respects, I think it's worse than the Nigerian prince because. It has dudes thinking with their dicks, and then, like, all common sense goes out the fucking window. That's true. Then they're That's getting true. hand jobs with Ralph's bags before you know it. <laughs> Full circle. <laughs> oh. The gateway. <laughs> and for other parts of the country that aren't in Southern California, Ralph's bags, like, out here, we have, like, the reusable bags. They're not, like, the thin plastic bag you get in a grocery store that we used <laughs> to get. Like, that fucker's thick. It's meant to be like reused. A burlap sack. Yeah. <laughs> Like, ooh, that that's just a rough handy. That it's a rough day too for somebody. Yeah, both. It's, <laughs> it's just a bad scene for. And then the poor karaoke employee who's got to clean the room later. Oh my god! Don't ever walk in there with a black light. You would not like what you see. <laughs> it, it would look like modern art. I'd just be like. That's when you know it's time for the interview to end. Is Carrie? <laughs> Carrie, Cody can't keep the earbuds in. To like, save her what's life. happening? <laughs> they both just flew out of your ear. Black light, black light semen. Out, out. Memories, memories. No, erase, erase. <laughs> delete, delete, delete. <sighs> so, what That's do you funny. guys think that, like, for the real life trafficking, could be done to improve and make life better for everybody? Gosh, well, I wish it could start with the family, right? Like with the parents. I mean, if you, I think a lot of girls come from broken homes, you know, like I think that if I had a better support system, I wouldn't have needed to go watch people give hand jobs with Ralph bags for money, <laughs> you know? Um, but I mean, that's the easiest way to get into it is when you have no money to pay your rent you, or you have nowhere to live and all you can think about is survival mode. I mean, I think that's the way that I've seen a lot of girls get into it. And so, um, you know, if you just start with the family unit, you know, being more supportive and well, um, that would be good. On that front, I mean, both you and I are Midwesterners. And at least my experience, like, I didn't really know anybody who was successful in any form of entertainment growing up. So all my family unit was like, that's a pipe dream. People don't do that. So even if you came from a healthy household, if you wanted to pursue something in entertainment, you may not have any fucking support there. Like, go get a real job. Yeah. They don't. They don't view working in 
any form of entertainment, let alone sex work, as a legitimate fucking job. Right. Yeah. So uh, that's a problem too. You're one hundred percent correct. Like, yeah, people need a support system. I say this all the time. Like, not everyone needs to fucking breathe. <clears throat> like, if you're not in a situation where you can actually care for a child or be responsible for a child, you need to be honest with yourself and not have kids. Yeah, I think all guys, when you're born, should get a vasectomy, and then you have to like pass <laughs> some like a driver's license test, and then you can get reattached, and that's when you're allowed to have kids. But now that's a good plan, Cody. Hey, Cody like, for president. If, yep. if the state wants to pay for my vasectomy, I'm in. <laughs> Matt's in. Oh, um, by the way, save the money in the end. That's my boyfriend back there. In case you guys were wondering, very that's creepy. Lance, Lance, next to the casket. Nice. That's the whole thing. <laughs> Nothing weird goes on at this house. Clearly. <laughs> I mean, it just looks like a good time. Shit. <laughs> just another day. Doubling down on that um, hiking invite. Done. <laughs> Perfect. Um, but I think also, you know, if there were like, I don't want to say better exit strategies in place, but more oppor- uh, opportunities that well, are affordable, first of all. Like, let's say you, you did the sex, like you were in sex work and now you want to get out of it. Like, you want to go back to school. Well, who the fuck is going to pay for that? You know what I mean? Like if there were just more programs to help people, I mean like, or what Serena's doing, like rescuing people, you know, I think if we could do more stuff like that, I think that would help. Well, and also like ending the stigma around sex work, because that's the problem. It's not a protected class in any way, shape or form. Serena, I'm sure you may have had experiences with that. Like if you wanted to go get a civilian job, people discriminating against you because of your past. Oh, oh, when I moved to Texas for a short time, I could not get a job to save my life. So I had to move back to California and get back into what I was doing. It was what I knew. Oh my God, that's fucked up, dude. Well, and I hear it so- really is. And I hear stories from other former performers who were like, oh, I had a job and then someone found out and then they just fucking fired me. <clears throat> wow. And I'm not saying like, it couldn't happen to me now. I, I don't know. It could, for all I know. I just don't think that they know that I am also a sex worker. So I mean, I would like to think that, I mean, I know we haven't, but I would like to think that some people have evolved and moved past it, right? And they're like, okay, great. Thanks for telling us, you know, and then like moving on. Um, but again, we live in the most, you know, liberal California, whatever. And I know some people feel that way and some people definitely still don't. So. Well, and uh, I'm sure if you're trying to go back to other parts of the country, you know, you got people still blaming women for like what they're wearing for shit going down. So, oh, I have no problem with you formerly being a sex worker, but like you're a distraction to the other employees, like or some bullshit like that. Right. Yeah. Or they don't want a sex, like a sexual lawsuit or whatever. And it's like, um, do you think I'm going to sexually harass somebody because I come from an adult industry and you're worried about a lawsuit? That's what they literally told me in Texas. One person actually told me that if they had a choice to hire me, who was a sex worker, fast, or somebody that just got out of prison, they would go with the person that just got out of prison because that's less likely to have sexual harassment lawsuits for their company. Oh, my God. So I was like, like, I'm going back to California. Yeah. Uh, Oh, my God. That's absolutely fucking crazy. Not that we should be discriminating against people who have done their time, like, that that's a whole nother fucking horrible ball of wax yeah like crime should be about rehabilitation not just punishment like you fuck up once that's why you were given this sentence so you do your time you learn from your mistakes and you do better on the next right but if you're given no opportunities when you got out of prison of course you're gonna end up back in fucking prison you gotta fucking eat right yeah but Agreed. What you did wasn't a crime. It's perfectly legal in California. Paid taxes on it. It was legal. It was safe. And Ugh. you're discriminating and against. I've always said this every ever since I've been in the industry because we're we're viewed as ew gross, you know, by civilian women most of the time. And it's like put our vagina on a shelf in a bar next to some civilian girl's vagina on a shelf in a bar, and let's just see which one's cleaner and which one's you know better taken care of and douched out and <laughs> oh yeah i mean i well, d- i was seeing a girl a little while back and she's like oh my god i can't believe i ever fucked you you fucked those dirty porn stars i'm like girl i 100 percent know you had unprotected sex with someone else a week before we started hooking up i'm not bothered by it but don't judge people they're getting tested every fucking 14 days right 
What were you going to say, um, Cody? Oh, I was going to say, I've never... Oh, wait. Can you hear me? Why yeah. Sound different yeah. Now? We can okay. hear you. <laughs> um, well, I've never douched before, so your vagina's probably way <laughs> You know, it, the day's still early. Right? Plenty of time. Plenty of time. You guys can go do the hike, <laughs> then a douche. And then go douche. Right, you don't want to douche before the hike. Not before the yeah, hike. Yeah, douche after the hike. And right. then have a beer after the hike. Mm-hmm. So, so hike, douche, beer. Yeah. Perfect yeah. day. Perfect Great day. Plan. Like podcast, hike, douche, beer. <laughs> Perfect. Full schedule. Right? Full schedule. <laughs> so call your assistants, block your time out. You'll be all set. I mean, do you know how many civilian people have never had an STD test in their life? Oh, it's mind-boggling. Guys and girls. It's crazy. Wow. Well, uh, I'm, it's a piece of fiction, but like apparently this ma- could happen. There was um, a show on Netflix called from the UK called Lovesick, where the main character had to go back to all his former lovers for the last like eight years and tell them that he had chlamydia. Now, that sounds fun. And in my <laughs> mind, I'm like... How does that fucking happen? And then other people are like, yeah, that makes sense. Like, I, I would never, like, people, if you're listening to this, chlamydia is 50% asymptomatic in men, 75% asymptomatic in women. Just get fucking tested often. Like, there are free clinics where you could get tested for free. Do that Thanks. shit. The last thing you want to do is give someone you want to be romantically involved with or anyone in general an STD because you were too fucking lazy to get a blood drawn piss in a cup. Also, I just learned on a movie that I just watched a documentary called Sea Spiracy that fish can get chlamydia. Just in case anybody was wondering. And cl- well, Fun I was going to fuck a, I was gonna fuck a <laughs> fish later, but now I make sure he wears a condom. Right? <laughs> Wrap that fish up. Cody, don't put him in a Ralph's bag, though. Don't. <laughs> okay, wait, I need to take notes. Hang on. Don't put fish in. <laughs> Well, and do shit out first. Do right. shit out. Yeah. Right. You got to make sure you're cleaned out for the fish. <laughs> now we've gone off to off a cliff somewhere. I dark. know. That happens on the show fairly regularly. Don't worry about it. Like, yep. <laughs> koalas are full of chlamydia too. Are they? Mm-hmm. Wow. I it, didn't know that. It was actually decimating the koala population in Australia. Huh. Oh. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Can we also discuss how cute your. Uh, uh, where's Cheeto? She's sleeping. Cheeto been her bed. forgotten about now. It's all- no, she just <laughs> sleeps all she wants. Hi, new puppy. Hey, hi. So his breath cute. His breath stinks. Oh my god, he's so cute though. Look at his little tuxedo. Yeah, he's very cute. For the audio Matt- audience, you are missing <laughs> cute puppies. Oh, Matt, yeah, do you puppy. have pets? I do not, because I can barely keep myself alive. Okay, fair enough. Like, it's Fair a miracle enough. I'm still here. Right? <laughs> I don't want to, so I don't want children, plants, pets. I don't want to be responsible for keeping anything else alive besides me. It's a hard enough job keeping this going. That's fair. You said, you said hard. My mind went elsewhere. I don't know. Not at this moment. <laughs> you two are lovely, but that would be inappropriate. <laughs> the, the fish douching didn't do it for you? <laughs> in the wraps bag? <laughs> no, that actually made it kind of crawl back inside. I have an any at the moment. <laughs> I need this napkin because I am wet right now. Woo! <laughs> oh, we're ruining Cody's couch. This is why I didn't invite you over to do this, Cody. I didn't need you ruining another chair. Makes sense. You ruin a chair at your house? (laughs) No, no, no. No other guests. Well, thankfully, they're leather chairs. If there are other fabric, things have happened. (laughs) Shit, the show sometimes gets a little wild. Okay. Casting couch. No, no, no. no, 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 I'm not. No, 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 no casting couch (laughs) bullshit. (laughs) Just watch the rest of the show so you know. Yeah, I'm not here to promise anyone any sort of fucking future. Don't worry. Oh my God. You will not be rich and famous for doing this fucking show. <laughs> there, there is no gateway to a career here. Not at all. Okay, you guys. I have to do this audition. Well, oh. we love you. Thank love you, guys. You. I had fun. It was a pleasure. We got to do it again. Great meeting you. You as well. We'll do it again. Like Do it in a longer format. Well, first yeah. of all, we all live a block from each other. So drink soon, I would say. I have a Brad rooftop. <sighs> He does. I've been on it. Behind you looks great. (laughs) I mean, (laughs) that's an illusion. The rooftop is actually real and cool. (laughs) 
Okay, deal, deal. As long as we can't fall off the rooftop. Oh, yeah, there's railings. It's safe. It's good. I, I haven't lost someone yet. <laughs> well, the I don't want you to be the first. No, we don't want that. But, well, goodbye, everybody. Well, before you run, where can they find you on run. social media, things like upcoming projects? Promote yourselves, ladies. Um, all of my social media is at hey, it's code E. So T O D E E, like code red, code E. Hey, it's Cody. Um, and that's Instagram, OnlyFans, Patreon. I was banned from TikTok, so not on there right now, <laughs> but gonna need to create another account. They banned me for, okay, adult content, even though I was just in a bikini and um, solicita solicitation. Um, Cause I said, hashtag click link in bio, but other bitches can say that and it's fine. And then um, dangerous acts because I was riding a motorcycle. Like get over it. TikTok, whatever. You know what? Screw them. I am anti TikTok. I will not join TikTok. So if they're being that way to you, then they can double fuck off. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Got you. Got it. Girl power fuck you. Support. TikTok. Right. I'm not on it either. <laughs> no. Nope. Um, and I will also be, um, I was uh, Miss February in the, Playboy Australia calendar for this year. And so I will also be in uh, an upcoming issue of Playboy Australia. Hell so yeah. stay tuned for that. I don't have the month yet. But and Cody, well, you me can... and Matt can't wait for our copies. Right, I mean. right. Yeah. Cody, and you can drop that OnlyFans link. Like if it's different than that, it's it's Cody. You can drop it's, it's hey, it's Cody. Okay, cool. Like, hey, it's Cody. It, this is a safe place to drop that OnlyFans link if you wanted. So like Hell yeah, come to my OnlyFans. Make it <laughs> rain, make it rain. Right. <laughs> Come to Cody's Club. Spend that money. Yeah. yeah. Whoop, whoop, whoop. You can find me on Instagram, Life of Miss B Haven. M-I-S-S-B-H-A-V-E-N. And I'm on Twitter, which I'm never on, but it's connected to my OnlyFans, at Miss Burke Haven. Hell yeah. Hell so yeah. I'll see you guys there with more or less clothes. I don't know. Yeah. Time will, time will tell. Time will tell. Time will tell with more or less clothes. And as always... <laughs> You can find me at Matt underscore Slayer on Twitter, Matt Slayer on Instagram, Matt F and Slayer on Facebook, twitch.tv slash Matt F and Slayer. You can find the podcast at Now We Drink on Twitter and Now We Drink underscore on Instagram. And until next week, drink up, motherfuckers. <laughs>